So just to continue, this research and knowledge was assumed to be neutral, apolitical, and void of subjective human interpretation. So the ways of gathering knowledge and creating knowledge took the human perspective out of it, supposedly. Um, so it, it continues to legitimate and is legitimate, legitimated by its own political interests. So in this breath, feminist scholars today are highlighting that including women and racialized people in the workforce isn't enough. Representation isn't enough because it's absorbing women and colored people into the master model uh, that continues to perpetuate oppressive knowledges, that these knowledges um, came from histories of patriarchal oppression and that it's not enough to fit people into masculine patterns of life because it just broadens the scope of the dominant class. So thinking again to Ahmed's metaphor of playing the game, it isn't enough to have a seat on the bench, uh, so to say, or to play the game. We're invited to play the game, we participate in it, but what really changes if we're still abiding by its rules? So perhaps then when we're, we're thinking of this metaphor of playing the game, um, we're actually maybe expanding its expansive territory under the guise of inclusivity and multiplicity. Um, so this is kind of arguing that representation, um, you know, is one step, but it's still not enough because we still need to undo the structures um, that people are, you know, trying to frame themselves within. So drawing on ecofeminist scholar Val Plumwood, these structures of human life, the logics of human reason, are again not neutral. They were maintained to a protagonist superhero that is Western psyche. And they have been deeply informed by long colonial histories of Judeo-Christian governance and morality um, that supposes man above woman, woman over child, human over land and nature. And as Plumwood suggests, these dichotomies continue to position women as passive, as closer to nature and purity, as well as children, as closer to nature as well, um, subordinate to the assertion of man and dominant culture. So these ways of knowing um, continue to have significant social implications in terms of how many settler colonial states were organized then um, and how those structures continue to frame our society today. So especially in terms of the displacement of black and indigenous peoples and the ways in which power is exercised and mitigated between people. So again, returning to these questions posed by Africa Taylor in her microblog, what would the architectures of the home corner look like if designed to accommodate all manner of refugees, dispossessed and displaced beings instead of nuclear families? What kinds of recuperative queer kin rituals, practices and relations would emerge in this purposefully reconfigured collective space? So turning now to a quote uh, by Denise Hodgins, she writes that feminist work is to make visible or make public that the personal and private is always political, that mundane matters. And by this, she's challenging um, dominant Western ideas of knowledge as transcendental, as general, as universal truths. She's gesturing here to the, the feminist orientation that the small matter uh, the mundane matters, small encounters are significant, situated matters are significant. Um, again, that power is not equitably distributed and lived, that we become through webs of relation, and that we, as researchers and educators, are not above or outside of the process of generating material discursive conditions and possibilities. So she's situating the educator within these discursive conditions um, and within social discourse. And here when she says that we become through webs of relation, she's really challenging um, the separativist individualist logics um, of the Western tradition that make themselves um, 
again and again through educational projects or dominant educational projects anyway. So in this lens, as educators, we can see ourselves as creating childhoods through conditions that we cultivate pedagogically. So it is through these conditions we propose um, that as educators we're able to stay with the troubles of a fraught past, to notice them, and to think with them. So to notice and see the separator of logics and theories in our work in education, and to try to experiment with pedagogies that create new and that create more relations rather than divisions. Um, to experience, uh, to create experiences that bring things together in complexity and uncertainty, rather than separating and reducing experiences into what we already know, have done before, or what we assume to be true. So in this week's forums, we're going to take up, take on, and put to work this feminist lens, situating our thinking within this theoretical perspective uh, and in the week's provocation, I'm asking you to consider the questions within this particular theoretical perspective. So um, situate yourself within this feminist theory and within the articles this week, and then come to these questions. So the first question is, thinking through a feminist theoretical lens, how do you understand Ahmed's notion of happiness as gendered, racialized, and as a product of the nation state? And then the second question is, how do you see these discourses of happiness and, you know, sort of the American dream visible in Canadian early childhood education? So again, this is not about necessarily articulating your opinion, but rather to try on a theoretical perspective and orient yourself um, to questions in this manner. So this week we're thinking as feminist scholars and educators and thinking through the forums with this particular lens to try out and seek to understand what it means to think through a feminist theoretical perspective.